Hello, Bear family. Um, welcome to our staff meeting. So this is intended to be a staff meeting. So um, myself, Ms. Garcia, and Mrs. Fulton will be addressing some issues, some concerns, and um, answer to some suggestions that were made. So um, we're going to use the Nearpod, um, I guess, application and the prompts are going to be provided throughout the video so that you can say like boom at this time you know i want to either offer additional comments ask for some more clarity or make a comment and you can do that as the video progresses or as this meeting progresses um so what i want to address first and foremost well let me rewind before i do i want to thank you guys and it's always necessary for me to do so because for me personally i feel super disconnected and I'm sure well, I don't know maybe you guys do too but you guys not so much because you at least are, are interacting with the kids um, I'm just used to seeing everybody and being with everyone but nevertheless it is what it is and you know we are doing what we do and that for that I want to say thank you I want to say thank you to all of you for doing what you do and that you're doing it with commit with a committed spirit and you're doing it with um you know the children's best interests at heart and i really do appreciate that and i know that's what's happening uh so i want to begin with addressing uh, attendance and some of the issues that were brought to my attention as it relates to attendance so a question was raised with um how late is too late so let's say, for example, a student comes into class and it's maybe the last five minutes of class. So that's not too late because if we were on campus, you know, a student comes into class and they, you know, are running in and they're like, hey, Miss, you know, Williams, I'm here, blah, blah, blah. And Miss Williams would say, OK, have a seat. You know, let me give you whatever you need. This is what you missed. Done. It's the same. It's the same idea. So a child attends class the last five minutes. You're just like, hey, hang out. I'll give you whatever you missed. And then if the child obviously during class time missed a lot of work, you're going to give that child a zero until we find out why they're late or, or why they were tardy. So you don't have to worry about the questioning of the student. Please send Ms. Paula copy me on an email saying that Elizabeth Garza was, um, you know, an hour late to class and zeros were given. Please um, follow up and then what we'll do is we make sure we will make sure that we follow up with the family to find out what happened and then we'll follow up by um, with you to let you know the teacher that you know the child was tardy for um, X Y and Z reasons please either excuse the work that they did not complete or accept it late etc etc we'll give you that information or zero stand there was no reason no excuse that is valid and so therefore the child will receive zeros for whatever was missed okay if a child for example comes to class and only attends a few minutes of class so they, they come to class on time they're marked present but they're only in class for maybe 10 minutes maybe whatever it doesn't matter and then they just leave they disappear you don't know what happened Again, you don't have to investigate. You just give the child zeros for whatever work they missed for the remainder of class. Send Miss Paula and myself an email saying that this child left class or disappeared from class. And then we'll follow up with why. Because there are things that happen beyond the child's, um, the child's uh, powers. They don't know that a parent is going to come behind them and just pull the computer from the wall because they need it for work. Um, maybe they had a sibling that is screaming and hollering and they're embarrassed and so they close their computer. Whatever the case may be, um, we'll find out and then we'll follow up with you so that you can know how to proceed with that child in terms of their uh, missed work. But the child will still be marked present under both circumstances. Um, tardies, well that, was, that kind of lends to tardies as well. So... <clears throat> A student who attends class but doesn't have their video on, um, that was something that was already addressed, but I'm going to reiterate. If a student comes to class and they don't have their video on and it seems that it's a refusal to
to turn their video on, then they are not present. Again, please email, we'll follow up with whatever the case may be. Before even emailing office personnel, please see if you can hit that child up in the chat and find out what's going on. Because if it's something that is a temporary issue and the child expresses that, then you use your own common sense as to whether or not you're gonna permit this particular child to be off camera. Now, again, if it seems to be obstinance and it appears to be that, mark the child absent and then follow up with an email to Ms. Paula and myself so that we can follow up and find out what's going on and notify the parent as well. Okay, so those are the attendance, uh, I think, issues and concerns that were raised. The other was um, group me. So there was some issues um, brought to my attention as it relates to the group me's, how there seems to be um, quite a bit of conversation going back and forth with um, on group me to a specific person. So for example, if someone asks me a question over the group me and it's the community group me and then I'm responding and they're responding we're having a whole conversation on group me that's disturbing classes so let's refrain from individual conversations across group me please hit that person up uh, with a direct message via group me and that way you can exchange as much as you need to or or desire to without disturbing classes because I know you know when the group me things that's how it sounds. Um, I'm looking, trying to see, you know, like what is being said or, you know, do I need to address something? So please, again, um, please be mindful of limiting the group me conversations um, in general. So um, especially during class time, I, I love to see, you know, the comments and I love to see the, the gifts come across group me. They're hilarious, but let's make sure that we're not doing it interrupting classes okay so let's just be mindful of that and um, um, trying to think if there was something else for me I um, miss Garcia and miss Fulton and I did meet and we talked about some of the issues as it relates to the advisory credit no credit and um, the danger of failures etc cetera, etc cetera. so um, mrs. Fulton will be presenting the information up next as it relates to advisory and as it relates to the in danger of failure notices and then follow following Miss Gar I mean Miss Fulton will be Miss Garcia. So um, that's it from me. Have a wonderful bear tastic day or evening whenever you're watching this. Go bears. Oh <laughs> let me rewind. So you're watching this and whatever time you're watching it um, please make sure that the comments, questions, suggestions are received by Wednesday, October 7, because if you don't raise your comments, questions, or concerns by then, then they're not going to be addressed. So please make sure that you do so by October 7. Oh, and another thing, uh, another issue that was raised or a question is can emails um, kind of come out at specific times of the day and that's not going to happen. Um, with emails, emails are being sent throughout the day, all day, just based on what's going on. And um, there's no way based on everything else that's going on that like for me, I'll speak for myself, that I can just chunk emails off to the side and say oh I'm gonna send this at you know or hit it's just too much basically you check your emails when you check your emails check them in the morning check them at lunch check them at the end of the day and respond accordingly if something is super pressing then um, you'll receive either a text or an individual uh, direct message through group me okay all right, thanks Bears. Talk to you later. This is Mrs. Fulton. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, I'm going to be sharing with you some information in regards to in danger of failure notices and advisory. I'm gonna be speaking quite fast because I have a lot to cover and I don't want to take up too much time. So I'll first start off with in danger of failure notices. Um, after many discussions with admin and with Tony, we came up with what we feel 
would be the most effective way to get these um, notices out to our parents. I know that Tony had mentioned in a prior email about doing a bulk um, distribution, but after talking to him about how it works and how it will be presented to the parents, we just kind of realized that it didn't fit our needs and it wouldn't be as a as effective as we want it to be and it won't have that sense of urgency that we need. So we came we, we decided to just kind of like take another route. So um, as you can see on the screen, the endanger or failure notice um, this probably looks familiar to you because it is basically a revamped version of the notice that we used a couple of years ago. We've taken out some of the verbiage, you know, to switch some things up so that it is more conducive to a distance learning environment. So basically what you would have to do is just fill this form out for each student. So you will fill in the name. Um, I'm going to say Susan Johnston or Johnson. Um, let's say that this is for your subject matter is PE. So PE. So you would click it once, click it twice, and then uh, you would right click it to get this check mark so that's how you get the check marks on here is you click it once click it twice and then you right click and then you can get your check if you decide that you don't want this check like oh shoot I made a mistake you just click it go up to the bullet points and then put back in your um, check box okay so for here you would just begin to put the grade you can put the the percentage which is always good for a parent to see and here you would do the same things of you know and you guys know how to do this you know you need to turn in your assignments click it once click it twice right click and then add your check you know um, must dress for PE whatever you know you need to put there you know you would do your check marks for so moving along to here where this was where um, there was once a parent signature now, you know, we don't want to have to worry about parent signatures because, you know, a parent has to scan it or do whatever to get you that signature. So instead of that, I have what do I do if I receive this notice? Number one, acknowledge receipt of this notice by replying to the teacher. So by the parent replying back to you, letting you know that they received it, that is now your signature. That is now the way that you know that the parent saw it. I also have check your child's grades and assignments on PowerSchool, uh, talk to your child, discuss their challenges, create a plan for how to improve their grades, and then communicate via email with teacher if further assistance is needed. So with this, you are going to be emailing these to parents. Now, before you fret, um, Tony was gracious enough where he he was able to uh, create an Excel spreadsheet that has all of the parent emails on it. So you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to search. Um, you know, PowerSchool is all on one Excel spreadsheet. So you're just going to have to find the student's name is in alphabetical order and the parent's name is there. I'm going to see if I can show it to you. Okay. So as you can see here, there is um, the list starts off with, you know, sixth grade. The kids' names are alphabetical order and the parents' names are here. So this is a whole list of all parents for our school. So this should be a cinch just to copy and paste into an email. Um, if you have, oh, also going back to this um, We've also extended the time that you have to get these notices out. So the notices are not going to be due next week. They're going to be due the, the following Friday, which I believe is the 16th. So you have two weeks to, you know, make your way through if you have a lot of these to go ahead and make your way through. And again, if you need help, if you um, have questions, I am here and available. I don't mind helping you get done whatever you need to get done. Um, so hopefully this answers all of your questions. Um, I know it's probably not the best case scenario for some of you, but um, it's the best case scenario for the majority or for, for the sake of the school. Okay, so let's jump into advisory.
So I want to go over the criteria for advisory credit, no credit. Um, there are six categories. We have attendance, on time to class, in uniform, binder, activities, slash participation, and, and enrichment. So in order to receive credit at the end of the grading period, they need to um, have a good standing in four out of the six criteria, or four out of the six um, categories. So we have attendance. Attend a minimum of 50 out of 59 days for the trimester. This is already going to be counted for you, so this isn't something that you need to put in, in the grade book. It's already there for you, and I'll show you where. On time, no more than six tardies. This is another thing that's already automatically counted for you, so you don't have to worry about putting anything in the grade book. In uniform, so if you put this in the grade, grade book, um, in order to receive um, a good standing in this category, they cannot be out of uniform more than five times during the grading period. For binders, not ready and visible more than five times. So that means if you ask for the binder and they are they don't, they don't have the binder ready and visible for you to see, then they will not receive credit for that particular time that you ask for the binder. And they cannot have that happen more than five times in order to be in good standing in this category. And then activities. Activities are they participate or they don't participate and at the end of the, the grading period did they participate at least 80% of the time during the grading period. And then for enrichments they have to do a, um, at least one enrichment a day. At this time Ms. Garcia and um, the TAs are doing enrichments with students so they have the role sheets and so Ms. Garcia will be sending you some information um, at the end of every month while her team is working on it um, in regards to who did or did not do enrichments for the month. Um, this will probably change once teachers start um, and staff start doing enrichments going forward through the rest of the year. So I'm going to quickly jump over to a grade book so that I can show you how um, your grade book should look and it's very simple. I want to thank Mr. Freeman for letting me fiddle around in his grade book to demonstrate for you guys. So basically like I was saying, um, absences are already being counted for you for the grading period so you don't have to do any of that over here and you don't have to create any categories for it. Same thing for tardies, it's already being calculated for you. The other categories, the uniform, the binder, the activities, and the enrichments, that's what you need to do over here. Now, we're not awarding any points for any of these activities. It's either, it's like a, you know, you get credit or you don't. You do it or you don't. So there won't be any points assigned to any of those categories. So when you go to create it, you're going to create um, a category. So I'm just going to say that this one is binders. I'm going to put a date so that it makes sense um, when parents look at it. The category is always going to be participation. You don't have to use the activity, the homework, or the assessment category. Just go ahead and use the participation category for everything because it's really basically participating. Um, point, you don't have to put any points. We're not giving any points, so you can put zero there. So now I'm going to create my category. So, say for instance that, um, you know, Melina, she has her binder. So I'm going to click inside of, I'm going to right click inside of Melina's um, name and I'm going to go to collected. That's going to show us this check. This just means that they receive credit. It means, got it, you did it, you got a check, okay? And then you can just go down, right-clicking, and collect, collect. If, for instance, Sophia decided she wasn't going to show her binder or she didn't have it, it was at Grandma's house, you just leave it blank. You don't have to give her a zero, just leave it blank. Um, and then you can go on and so on and so on as you normally, you know, would grade. 
if you have a day where everybody has their binders, everybody's good to go. If you right click inside of the description box here, you can do field scores and this will come up. You need to click collected and click collected over here. Both of these must be checked. Hit OK and then the whole thing will, um, the, the whole entire row will be marked as collected. Now, some of you guys may already have um, a category, you know, filled in and you now you need to just change it over. It's pretty simple. Um, I would first, if you, especially if you have a lot of grades, I would screenshot um, what, what I have in there already. So if I had like grades in here, I would just open it up and just do like a screenshot just so I have a record of what I put in here already before I started to erase stuff. So I'm just going to create a fake category. Um, uh, what can I do to say? Um, ten, one, twenty, and let's just say I'm gonna fill it with scores. Okay, you fill scores. I'm gonna say everybody got a ten. Okay, <clears throat> so. It's very simple to just go and like click into this description box, change anything you need to change if you need to change this to participation, or you can go in and you can um, clear the scores out. Yes, and then you want to refill them. You don't want to make sure you don't want to put any numbers in here because if you put a number in here, it won't be marked as collected. It won't show green check. And then just go in and then do fill scores. Um, I think that's pretty much it with this. Actually, um, I wanted to show you this. So I'm just going to erase this that I did. So I'm going to delete this assignment. Yes. Okay. So now I have my um, my grade book looking good with you know zero points everything is red because it's participation and I have my check marks and I have my blank spots for children who do not um, who are not receiving credit as you can see over here now there's no scores there's no grades um, because this is where you will manually at the end of the day come in and put in their grade so you will right click on the grade here, go to show score inspector, and here's where you would do the manual override. You hit manual override, click here, you will scroll down to credit, and you would, if you want to write a comment, maybe they didn't receive credit, and if they have no credit, and you want to explain to parents why they have no credit, you can do that as well. But when I close it, It'll say credit, and it will say zero percent because we're not, you know, they weren't, they're not being graded by points. It's just credit or no credit. So that's how you do the manual override. If you want to, in these boxes where it's blank, um, you want to go to show score inspector. Here you can write a comment if you want to say, you know, student, you know, didn't have binder or a student didn't want to participate this day, you know, as a note to yourself as to why it's blank and a note to the parent if they go into power school, why it's blank, that's perfectly fine to do. But we're trying to stay away from giving an actual score of a zero. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions about it, feel free to ask me. I can go over with you if you're having trouble finding something or changing something. I'm always available for questions on that. So I hope this helps. Hi teachers, this is Ms. Garcia. Um, thank you for joining us in our meeting today. Today I'm gonna um, talk briefly about our special education and there will be a follow-up meeting, which I will let you know a little bit more about at the end of this short slideshow. 
So we're going to start by one thanking you for everything that you're doing, everything that you've done, everything that you continue to do. And we want to simply provide feedback, also provide data uh, and information that we've gathered from our parents. We had our first SPED parent meeting last week and we, they brought up you know, some of the concerns that they have obviously with their child being at home now and some of the accommodations that they are either seeing or not seeing. So some of their concerns were uh, specifically extra time and reduced assignments. They were not very aware of how or if that was happening. So that was one of their points being that they are able to observe the child at home. They do notice them being highly frustrated, constantly lost and feeling defeated. Some of the challenges, as we all know, is the technology, their internet issues, internet not connecting, uh, internet being slow from moving from one app to the other, submitting things correctly or appropriately. Some of the times they did mention that the workload, they feel overwhelmed, sometimes they feel stuck. So again, this is just feedback that we receive from parents and we wanna share it with you. And we want to go back to basics. And with that, making sure that know you that know um, you know who your students who qualify for special education services are, knowing what accommodations per their IEP they are allowed to have, intentionally planning with their accommodations in mind, um, and this must be visible in your lesson plans. When you use and how you use your cohort TA, are they reteaching? Are they co-teaching? Are they in breakout rooms? Are they checking for understanding? Are they following up? In terms of the accommodations. We need to make sure that we understand that they are meant to assist you in providing opportunities for success for students in your classroom. They are not only to be used in academic success. This is also an opportunity for students to work at their own level as they strive to make progress. Remember, progress is the goal. We know and understand that a lot of our students who qualify for these services are not at grade level. And therefore, we need to understand that these accommodations allow them to be successful and make progress from where they are level-wise. We also need to know that not all accommodations look the same for all students who need them. And during our meeting, we will talk about those specific accommodations for specific students. And lastly, accommodations are not a choice. They are part of their individual education plan and it is a legal document we must follow. So if they are to get extra time Again, that is not a choice we make. It is per their IEP and accommodation that they need to have. In terms of accommodations, we're gonna give you a second right after this question for you to reply and give us your feedback. What accommodations do you have in place for students who qualify for those services? And how do you communicate that with your students or the parents? And here are some of the most common accommodations that our students have. Some of them need extra time. Some of them need frequent breaks. Some of them need to, you know, uh, for someone to check for understanding constantly, for them to have written instructions. So go ahead and take a minute, read through these and answer the question, what accommodations do you have in place for students who qualify for these services? And how do you communicate that with your student or parent? And lastly, all of these will be shared along with a lot more examples and ideas on how to better meet the needs of our students who qualify for special education services. Our special education grade level meetings will be on Friday, October 9th. And as you can see, eighth grade will meet from eight to 8.45, sixth grade from 10.15 to 11, and seventh grade from 11.15 to 12. I hope that you have a great rest of your day and thank you so much for joining us.